Yeah, it is another episode of the Autumn Windbags. RJ Clifford, Juan Soto. Let's have some fun today. You know, I had an epiphany Monday morning. Woke up. Is that a drink? A little, little bit of a hangover. A little bit of uh, a big smile on my face from the game. And I, I reminded myself, all the torture we go through, being an NFL fan or like having a team, mm -hmm. all the down years, all the off season of just like so much time, so much energy, reading up everything, watching everything, studying everything, hoping, praying, highs, like the downs, the sadness. It's like that feeling when nobody thought we were going to go into Baltimore and beat the well-rested like NFL MVP quarterback, all-star running back, Harbaugh coach. No one has a chance. Everyone picked against him. We kick him in the dick. And like that smile that I've had on my face, Soto, since that Sunday afternoon, it's like this is what it's all about. This is why it's all worth it. And this is why I, I always like when people's like, oh, we should tank get the number one. It's like those joys of those weeks where you win, they're they're worth a lot. They're worth they're worth a whole bunch. I don't I don't I don't trade those things easy. Yeah. It's it's weird. I thought it would be the other way, but I've gotten much better since we've been doing the show at not letting the result of the game like affect literally the rest of my week up until the next game. Mm -hmm. Uh but yeah, it it is it is a little bit of a brighter outlook. I I, I tend to be waking up a little bit faster and earlier and hitting the gym a little harder just you know pep in your step traffic doesn't bother you quite as much you know it's like the hangovers don't hurt quite as bad it's, it's just like i'll never understand it but when your nfl team is is doing poorly everything in your life is like 22 percent worse and when your team's doing well there's there's just the rainbows over your house the birds are singing the grass is green They'll skip in your step. Everything's just better. It's Everything's just one just more better. piece of one more piece of straw, man. When you know when when uh, when your team loses, it's like a big old bundle of straw. It's like just that little extra piece of straw mm -hmm. to break that camel's back, man. A little extra piece of straw, uh, and everything that you, happens to you it tends to be a little piece of straw. And especially this one too, because every odds maker, every expert picked us to lose, which made us make us go zero and two, and it's like okay, like. We all know the stats of teams that lose their first two with the chances of the soup, you know, going to the playoffs and all that is basically out the window. Yeah. And uh, we did it as the biggest underdogs of the weekend against a damn good team that played to our weaknesses on paper. Like it was a bad matchup on paper for us. And now we're, you know, I'm not going to jinx it, but we're hitting a stretch of not the world's biggest world beaters coming up, right? We'll get to the Panthers game at the end of the show breaking that game down and it was just like that upset win on the road the future ahead everything feels good i mean i was i was optimistic for sure i definitely thought that that nine and a half spread i think it ended up at eight and a half that's a super disrespectful dude like how many teams like there's not that many blow most most games are within a score it's week two how do we know what anyone is it's so fucking anyway and then I, I'm watching the coaches tape. I even told you guys there was a bunch of guys open in week one. We just couldn't protect. Mm. And um, I honestly think that throwing the ball deep and to the outsides was part of the game plan from the very beginning because that's what we lined up at the very first play of the game. Mm. We lined up with three wides, one tight end, you know, like, and we wanted to pass the first two freaking the first two plays were pass plays that he got sacked on so it's like we wanted to do that from the beginning it's just you know we couldn't protect so we started running the ball more and that didn't work out so that was kind of a rough first half there but um i saw i saw glimpses of what can happen if just you know colton miller gets a little bit you know more more up to speed if you know, we're a little bit better communication on the line, stuff like that. Give uh, just a half a second more. Get, mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't, don't give, get Minshew's head taken off. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I, th there was some life there. The defense was the defense. They're going to, they're going to show up. But there was some life there offensively. 
and we took a look at some of the things that um, that uh, they did against the Chiefs. Uh, a lot of the receivers out wide were, were more open. They, they didn't really get a lot of stuff over the middle. It was a lot of stuff out wide. Uh, Minshew can scramble and, and break plays down and stuff like that. Uh, you know, not, he's not Patrick Mahomes or anything, but that's when Mahomes had the, you know most of his his success uh, was thrown to the outsides and kind of like on the scrambles and stuff. They did a great job of taking away the the, the tight end that will remain nameless, but uh, they couldn't do anything against Bowers. Bowers is, I, I focused on him watching the tape from this game, and holy shit. I have in the rundown Brock Bowers' circle jerk, which is coming Good up. Good God, shortly. dude. This, shortly, this, that, this, this kid, dude, he was getting open with just his route running against any everybody, linebackers, safeties, slot corners, outside like DBs. Like, he was getting open like a receiver against – against good good corners like this is a good defense and uh he's able to he was able to create a lot of good separation and uh yeah. it, it he, he didn't use it with his bulk use it with his girth like no man no it was his route running and his acceleration it's weird like he doesn't look like he's running fast but he's he, he always creates separation mm. uh we'll get to uh more in depth on brock bowers here in a second the big talk going on in the NFL, national news-wise, about the Raiders um, is in regards to a potential trade. So, uh, Mina Kimes of ESPN was doing an NFL on ESPN bit, and they were talking about Matt Stafford and how the Rams are in ugh, rough shape. Their two best receivers on IR, um, two of their best offensive linemen injured, not coming back. Then you got 36-year-old Stafford with you know, a long history, and only 36. He's not ancient, but bad neck injury and some other injuries. Mm -hmm. And so they're talking about like where he's at. And then this scenario was brought. Well, I think that there needs to be a little bit of an evaluation period with regards to some of these offensive linemen coming back. Right. Havenstein's coming back from the injury. You're going to get your starting left tackle back, Larrick Johnson, who was suspended the first two games. But the interior of that offensive line being so damaged. The information it, of that, how, the, the, the time of those injuries is everything. It's going to matter a lot whether or not you can get a little bit healthier because they can't run their run game with this right. IOL and Stafford certainly needs more protection. If they were to make that decision, then it, it's, okay, what teams are we talking Ooh. about? I want to pitch one to you guys, the Raiders. I, I'm just so watching the first two weeks. That is a very, very good defense. Very good. Devontae Adams is still one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Yeah. Ooh. Brock Bowers looks like a dude. Yep, he does. Imagine uh, Matthew wow. Stafford. I'm just I'm throwing it out. I, I'm not Matthew Stafford to the Raiders. Um, we were pretty much the only team this offseason that needed a quarterback that didn't get. We obviously got Gardner Minshew. But didn't get like the guy that everyone thought would be the guy. Either uh -huh. drafted, yeah, either drafting a guy really high or signing a you know a Kirk Cousins level guy or a Baker. Like we're basically the only team that we're not like oh everyone. We had a quarterback battle between a a second a, a second year fourth round quarterback and a sixth rounder who's been a backup everywhere he went. Right, we're basically the one team. So anytime there's a quarterback possibility, we're gonna come up in conversation. Um, and considering how well the defense is playing. Um, we all know Devontae Adams is a crazy weapon. We all know Jacoby Myers is great, and Brock Bowers is turning into everything we thought so and more. Um, mm -hmm. are we a are we a quarterback destination Soto for any good quarterback that's needs a change of venue for any reason? Matthew Stafford, uh, uh, you know, being the one currently right now. I think we are just for the simple fact that it's a he, it's a position of need. If you're not sold on Gardner Minshew, uh, which I don't think any of of the of the uh, Raider fan base, even if they like Gardner Minshew, uh, they don't know that he's necessarily going to be the guy long term at that position. He can be a backup for us, like he was in other places, like a really good backup for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. But we would would like to have a guy with some more high end traits, uh, and we have a lot of cap space. So that's two big things to be able to get some of this done is we don't have a lot of holes. So, you know, given a, you know, probably a third round, second round pick, 
Uh, he's not going to – Stafford's too old, and he costs too much money to give him a first-round pick. It's, that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, so giving up a, maybe a day-two pick, you know, uh, that would be feasible, uh, or maybe day-two and something else. We don't have a tremendous amount of holes on this team. We, we need some depth, but that's, you know, getting the young guys up to speed type of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when we have the cap space and – as long as that neck checks out, I'm very concerned about that neck. I'll be honest with you. Um, I was concerned. I don't know if you, we, when we talked about teams that can be quarterback needy in the draft coming up and we started naming teams and I started naming a bunch of teams in their situations and the Rams was one of them uh, because they didn't have a lot of depth. Um, and, uh, you know, Stafford was an issue uh, in my eyes uh, injury wise. Uh, I don't know that a lot of guys know how bad his neck injury was. He almost had, he was almost retired medically. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had to go to a couple different doctors to get cleared to to come back and play. And he was, and he came back, but I mean, that was a serious injury. And, um, uh, you know, it's, he's not a spring chicken. What is he like? 36, 37, 36. How many years does he have? I mean, they, all these guys, they, they're playing till 40 now, but does Matt Stafford want to play till 40? Uh, you know, those are things that you need to know before you, you know, but it, it should everything work out. I mean, I, 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 it's, there are worse trades out there. So a couple things. Um, first off, they just redid his contract this spring where it's basically like a $40 million one year deal, basically. Right. So, um, regardless of where he plays after, you know, this season and after there'll probably be a restructure going on right so it's more like they restructured so it's kind of like you know the rams after that injury they're like okay well let's do one more year and then let's figure it out after that with your injury what you want to do where we're at as a team etc and as we know the rams are the epitome of the team that keeps kicking the can down the road and at some point that's going to come to roost right there's going to have to be a reset at some point and it might as well be when your best two receivers are out your o-line is swiss cheese and do you want a 36 year old quarterback with you know he's got one Super Bowl, but he's not. He doesn't want to just hang around on a team that's injured and and limping through the season, and then maybe go. You know what I mean? Like he he's motivated to go somewhere. Um, we have the draft capital to to take him, right? We've got picks, right? I'm with you. I think a second round is probably makes sense, right? Um, we got the cap space to pay him. The biggest thing though is they were talking about how well Matthew Stafford's got to get out of there because they don't know when the line's going to be healthy. They can't protect for him. That's our biggest Achilles heel is our offensive line has been playing like trash and run run blocking has been worse than pass block, but pass blocking has been bad as well. So that's, that was the one weird thing for me when they're, when she's like, Oh, the line's so bad. He's got to get out of there. How about he goes to the Raiders <laughs> where the line is and, and at least so, but the, the one hope is, is Colton Miller just either getting healthy or getting mental reps, new system. Like, is he going to keep getting, the culture that we know that we know i don't i don't think he just got shitty overnight um, and then jackson powers johnson again we're, we're i think we're putting a lot of hope in a rookie and we're all very high hopes for him but still a rookie didn't get all of his reps in the offseason had a little injuries in preseason stuff like that so it's, it's gonna make an immediate impact that i you know like i don't know there's a lot of we're hoping but i don't know if there's like good optimism there but i would say absolutely i'll take it give you a second rounder for Matthew Stafford and have him have a chance to throw passes at Devonte and yeah, have a, have a three, a little three year, a little three year, you know, contract already set up before the trade. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I would go for it. I would go for it for sure. Um, I really do think, I mean, Mina Kynes doesn't know the Raiders offensive line situation, dude. Mm-hmm. She's, she's a talking head. She has, people writing all her shit for her okay she has no she has she, there's she's not plugged into what's going on like with each individual team okay she's a script reader I, so, I think she's pretty I think she's pretty decent but when you're covering you're a national writer you're not gonna know exactly the left guard situation of one team you know what I mean yeah. here's I mean that's I stand by my statement she's a script huh. reader so um I don't know that she necessarily knows like the ins and outs of what's going on with our line. I definitely do feel like Colton Miller is going to come back into round back into shape. And, um, I mean, I, I did, I did those videos, uh, 
scouting our, our draft picks. And man, J JPJ is really good, dude. He's mm -hmm. he's better than any guard we have. He's definitely more powerful than any guard that we have. And this one of the issues that we have is the, our interior offensive line gets pushed around. Uh, in the run game, we get pushed around. I mean, James is just. I mean, if James doesn't watch out, dude, JPJ may just be this new center mm -hmm. because he's getting he's getting pushed around pretty bad. But JPJ is really good, and he's going to go in. Then he's going to be, I would say, probably our most physically gifted interior offensive lineman right away. Yeah. I mean, considering again, like I don't, ugh, I don't want to. I do a, um, I do a, a Monday segment on our buddy Steve Cofield's Vegas show every, you know, every Monday, and I was like, he was like daring me, he was tempting me to like start counting the wins coming up, you know, like Panthers and Browns and Broncos, right? Like it's. Not that daunting early, right? And he's like daring me to be like, oh, you're going to be four and one, right? It's like, no, 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 shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I'm not doing it. But it wasn't that long ago when people were talking about, oh, they got to move on from Devontae. The Raiders are, you know, the Raiders are the ones that are going to be starting over. It's a reset. You know, they don't have a quarterback. They're going to start getting rid of assets so they can rebuild for next season. Mm -hmm. And now one giant upset and a pretty simple, you know, pretty tame early schedule coming up and everyone's like yeah they should they should they should trade for super Bowl winning quarterback they should they should get stafford they should that's a destination they're they're, they're here to win baby one game well, one game well, it's, it was not, it's not e about it, it is somewhat to do with the game but it's more so about the opportunity because that's what people were saying about this team from the beginning is they have everything but the quarterback they got the defense. They got the weapons. You know, it's just need the quarterback to be able to get them the web, to get on the ball. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, yeah, how how yeah. fast is he going to be able to get up to speed? I don't know. What's, Do you put him out the, there right away? I mean, I don't. I don't think Stafford's ever had a system that's jived with Getzy. Like, has he? I don't think there's ever shared any. Is there any crossover with coordinators? Has he ever even kind of so. touched any of that coaching tree? I don't think so. Right? I don't. No. I don't off the top of my head. I could be completely wrong, but off the top of my head, I can't. Like, it's going to be a real. It's I mean, gonna he's be a, been in a, a similar scheme where he is now, like a West Coast style scheme. Like it's just very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, it's just it's all similar I, concepts. I, it's just the I'm just trying to different. think. I'm just trying to think if things keep going south in LA. Um, Cooper and Puka can't play for keep. Keeps can't being able to play for a while. The line doesn't improve. Stafford's just getting his dick kicked in into the dirt every single week. The trade deadline starts coming up. You know, late October starts rolling around, and the Rams are you know one and six or something, and they want to shop them. What's the market like? Who would they? Who would they be competing? Who would we be if we wanted him? Who would we be competing with? Oh, man. Uh... It would have to be an injury. It has to yeah, be an injury. So someone getting injured um, on a good team. So Miami, Miami yeah. would be one. Uh, I don't know that Tua plays again this year. I don't know. I, I'm not saying a hundred percent, but it's he's going to be gone for at least the first the next four games. Uh, there's that. Uh, depending on the implosion in uh, in New York with the Giants, Daniel Jones looks god awful. He looks yep. freaking terrible. Uh, you know, it's Cleveland, it, maybe with the how bad uh, that, that contract they, they can't get out of that contract, dude. They redid it to kind of free up a little bit of money and kick the can, like, like you said, kick the can down down the road. A little that's bit. another defense you don't want to waste, right? Cleveland, yeah. Like, but the thing is, it's like you, you got yourself a quarterback that you believe in, he's just he's just playing like like dog, shit, you know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so it might be it might be a buyer's market a little bit, right? Which is kind of crazy to think that a Super Bowl winning thirty six year old quarterback is you so know thirty six no years winning. old injury history. Like it's got to be a situation where he's looking to plug in and win. Mm -hmm. I like honestly, I like the uh, the Miami situation. If I'm like like looking at it from Stafford's eyes, just because that offense is a little bit more run heavy, and uh, he's uh, he doesn't have to go in there and like carry the load the the jv team at my high school is more run heavy than our than the raiders right now <laughs> oh, <God, dude. laughs> like everyone two yards of carry everyone's more running so i guess i guess so we we've got we got the weapons and we're appealing offensively um got the draft capital got the cap space for them no problem 
The only questions are, does he want to go, would he want to play behind this line? And is there a scheme that's he's more familiar with somewhere else? I think that would be the two, the two variables, depending on yeah, where, where he I, I can get along with that. I mean, because I mean, wherever he goes, it's going to be something where like the 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 money part is is done before he goes there. Like only the Jets do that. Only the Jets trade for a high priced player who has a contract dispute and don't fix the contract before they trade for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the Hassan Reddick thing, that's just absolutely brutal what happened over there. Um, but I I doubt if they trade him to another NFC well, team. Yeah, it's probably well, going to be an AFC team. The, the way I understand his contract is it's essentially a one year, $40 million deal. And he gave up all of his guarantees for next season. So we'll have yeah, him. He, they, 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 they gave, they put every, all his guarantees in, into this loaded year. it all. Right. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, you know, it's not, so we'll, we'll have him for more than we, like he's under contract for like four more years, but it's, you know, it's one guaranteed year. And then just kind of like make believe land after that. I'm not, again, neither one of us are like capologists, but it's not a, this isn't rocket science. Like he's going to want some guaranteed money. We can rework it to be a little yeah. bit more cap friendly. Well, I, I also think it could be a prove it year for us too. Like, like you, you come here, right? Let's let's see what we can do. And if you crush it, you've got us over the barrel, right? You, we go deep into the playoffs in the back of you. It's like, all right, let's redo that contract. Yeah, I'll take sixty million dollars a year, please. That's the going rate. Or, hey, it doesn't work out. There's no guarantees. You got your money. You tried. No harm, no foul. So. All right, I mean, it all kinda... let, let me throw something at you real quick. Throw it. I'll catch it. All right. Up? Our next few games, Panthers, Browns, Broncos, Steelers, Rams. It's the next five games, okay? It's going to coincide very closely with the trade deadline. Then we have the Chiefs. That's the next six games. Let's say we go... Four and two, or five trade. and one. Who knows? Four and so, two. So, so trade deadline is November fifth. The game before that is Bengals. The Bengals. So let's let's count Chiefs the Bengals. Before that. Okay. So it's the next seven games. So seven games. Let's say we go five and two. Let's just say. Okay. So we're six and three, right? We're probably either tied for first or you know first or second. Right? We're we're in the playoff hunt for sure. Mm. And our our team's cooking and it's solid. It's together. Do you? disrupt that if if we if it's not Minshew that's doing it you know what I mean if it's if Minshew is just getting better and better and better and he's like the heart and soul no but a better player is a better player it's hard to ignore that I've always said like sometimes we sometimes we outsmart ourselves well, this guy he doesn't exactly fit. He was in a zone blocking when it's a, when we were a power, or you know, blah 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 blah. blah. It's like, look, who's better? I need a really, really, really good reason to say I don't want to go get this better player mm-hmm. that we can afford. Like, you know, again, if it's like contract makes sense, money makes sense, value makes sense, he's not injured, all this blah blah blah. Right? Mm-hmm. There has to be a really, really, really good reason for me to say that's what we argued so much about Russell Wilson. You're like, well, he's going to poison the locker room, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, there, he's a better quarterback than what we had. I need a really good reason to not take a player who's better than the player we have that we can afford and all makes sense. How's that working out for the Pittsburgh Steelers right now? Right? Not great. The other part is our bye week is right after the trade deadline. So he could come in, not after, and he could come in the day, you know, the day, like after we play Cincy, literally that Monday morning, he comes in. He doesn't play a game for 13 days. He's got two weeks to figure out the system, and that bye week just worked out perfectly. So, something to follow. I mean, something something to keep an eye on, and I love conversations of, I love when the national conversation isn't, all right, it's going to be a yard sale in Las Vegas because they suck and they're going to want to give up, and now it's, ooh, they're doing something. Guys are going to want to go there. How can they How can they add more, uh, more gun turrets to their warship? This is way who else was super like? Who else was super frustrated with the national coverage? It wasn't that we won the game. It's so it's what Baltimore did to lose it. Mm-hmm. It was just. I mean, again, it's super. In fairness, ten, ten penalties for dumb. Um, Look, all ten of those penalties weren't in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Okay, and our defense did a great job 
It wasn't them like they weren't like the Keystone cops out there throwing the ball off each other's helmets and shit. Okay. We actually went there and we made stops. The one gift that we got was the freaking shank punt. But other than that, we covered a kick and the inside the 20. And the penalty after, right? Shank punt and then 15 the yards. After, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that was great. Money. It was awesome. I mean, shit happens, bro. I mean, yeah. uh, the, the the penalties that people were saying were, were like ticky-tack. No, dude. Devontae Adams is getting held in the end zone. You're going to get that flag every single time. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know, man. It just – it's almost like – they're 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 talking around us in circles to kind of um justify their pick of the ravens winning oh well they would have won if they just didn't implode at the end it wasn't that the raiders just sacked up and and won the game at the end just they, they, they gave them no credit good keep underestimating us that's fine make please. us another nine and a half point underdog that's, please. that's cool please underestimate us yeah think like, oh yeah they just everyone just keeps getting lucky Raiders keep getting lucky please I mean, it's it's, okay. it's something to, like you said, something to keep an eye on. It's interesting to talk about. I am not like super on board with making this happen. Let's go get Stafford. Blah blah blah. This and that. No, I would rather see what we got going on here. He's a better player, yes, but I'm very scared about that injury. I, the, the neck injury. It's just it's just something that really kind of freaks me out. If our doctors check him out and they say he's fine, okay, fine, but. A lot um, has to happen. A lot has to happen. A lot has to happen. Now, but, you know, it's something that's to kind of, you know, keep under your hat. So, John Gruden popped back up in the news, and this is very much on purpose. It wasn't an accident that he popped up. Uh, CBS Sports did an interview with him. And John Gruden said, and I quote, Yeah, I'm interested in coaching. College. My dad was a college coach. I was a college coach at Pitt. My wife was a cheerleader at Tennessee when I met her. Hell yeah, I'm interested in coaching. I know I can help a team. I know I can help young players get better. I know I can hire a good staff. That's the only thing I can guarantee. But yeah, I'm very interested in coaching at any level, period. And I brought this up last year where eh, it's probably too hot for him to play in the NFL. It's not impossible or uh, to coach in the NFL. It's not impossible. There's there's coaches that are literally suing the NFL right now that are coaching. So it's, it's, it's possible, right? Certainly it's, it's, it's currently happening now, and it's happened before. But I thought it would be way more likely for him to do some kind of college thing as a, as a keep busy gig. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's a great fit college-wise, but I am so fucking in to watch. I'm so in to watch him take over some, like, some like non-power four random team and see what he can come up with just, just to watch it. Like a D, like Deion Sanders in in um in Colorado, like I am so down to see how that goes. John Gruden with a bunch of twenty year olds. Yeah, I, w I was just gonna bring up Dion. Like if if uh, if the national media is all behind Dion and what he's doing out there, even though they're you know mediocre at best of a team, um, I mean, why wouldn't they get behind John Gruden? I think um, if this were five years ago, college football, I think he'd be a lot more successful. But with the transfer portal and NIL, I think because he'd be such a better dictator than because like now, like this is partly why like Saban left and stuff like that is now the, the players have power. Before you'd be like, I'm Nick Saban. This is Alabama. You do what I say, motherfucker. And you have mm -hmm. no other option, right? I, I'll bench you. I got three other five star players backing you up. Like get your, your, you gone. Now players are like, if you yell at me, I'm going to tell. And I'm going to hit the transfer portal and I'm going to take that million dollars in NIL money for just one season. And then I'll get 1.5 million at your rival, you know, like Gruden's going to have to play nice a little bit or learn to. Uh, I mean, Gruden's players loved him, dude. Mm -hmm. He's a player's coach, you know, uh, he coaches them tough, but he was the one that put his arm around car and like you know let's watch film together and you know getting guys on their side and warren saps out there you know backing him up and like, i mean his his players loved him he's a player's coach i think the players in college are going to love him too just because he's a quirky guy and he knows a lot of football he could teach him a lot and he, it, it, guys at that age if you can teach them something if you can get make them better they'll stick around they'll stick around especially a, a high profile because any, anywhere gruden coaches he can coach at any IA school. It's going to get some looks. It's going to get some pub. 
if John Gruden is coaching. So um, that's one of the things that they want to play, they want to produce, and they want to have eyes on them. And if, I think Gruden brings them that. I would love, love to be a fly on the wall when he's sitting in the living room of a high school quarterback he's trying to recruit and hear that pitch. Oh, my God. That would be – that's pay-per-view worthy. Oh, for sure. That's behind the paywall right there. Dude, him getting all fucking jacked on it. He's like, okay, here's what I want to do with you. All right, just imagine this. You're behind the center. All right, you say hi. Boom. We got a five-star receiver on the right. We got a five-star receiver on the left. You're running through a wider spot behind a banana. And he's going to run a potion. You're going to roll back and you're going to throw it. And the crowd's going to go crazy and you're going to go doing big things. Like, it, oh my God, it would be. I don't do a good Gruden, but I would love to see it. I mean, I honestly think that he, maybe just his age, but he was a lot more, what's the word? He was a lot more combative with Gannon and with mm -hmm. Brad Johnson. He was a lot more combative yeah. than he was with Derek Carr. Mm -hmm. um, I think he, like you said, I think he's he, 61 he, now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like he maybe have since he's softened a little bit in his age, and he, I think he knew he knew that Derek Carr wasn't that thick-skinned Rich Gannon or a thick-skinned Brad. Like he, you know, he he had to, you know kind of smooth over some trauma from previous coaches and years and stuff like that and to get the best out of them. And, um, I mean, I think he, he can, he can be that guy for a, a college program should he choose to. And that's kind of, I think we talked about this before. Uh, and, and we were, I mean, I, I know that I was, I think you were as well more into him coaching college than in the pros. Uh, and uh, there's just so many college programs out there. You know, there's over 200 college programs. Pick one. And you're big fish, small pond. Like, yeah. if you go to some, you know, you'd say you go to. The, uh, and he's from the Tampa area. What if he does, like, you know, he does, he, he goes to South Florida or he goes to, like, uh, 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 FIU or something like that? It's something in the area. He, he could the, 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 look. Who's going to out-recruit out -recruit John Gruden there, at a small time college? There's Miami, and then there's the rest of Florida. Okay, Miami is like the glitz and all this stuff and the freaking big old booty cheeks bouncing and all that stuff. And the rest of it is just the country. Florida State is dog shit. They might be firing their coach. They might. That would be freaking crazy that would be so if he went to Florida State. I would. Oh my god, how fun would that be? How much fun would that be? John Gruden, Florida State. Yeah, Florida guess. State. That would be nuts. That would be crazy. You know he have no happen, problem. But. You know he would have no problem doing the Seminole Chop. Uh, oh yeah, he's all about it. He's already practicing, I think. Uh, but I mean, it's there's a lot more forgiveness in the college ranks because it's they they're gonna do whatever they want to do, and they'll just be like, okay, whatever. We'll police ourselves. Thank you very much. It'll be fine. I'm here for it. I just want to see him doing something cool again. You too, buddy. Right? Yeah. Cats agree. Yeah, man. Apollo's all two, about it. Two paws up. So Brock Bowers is really coming off. He's really starting to gain some national attention. He's leading all tight ends in receptions and yards. Still not hasn't gotten in the end zone yet. He was really – I thought he was in. He was dragging dudes like crazy into the end zone. He did like two spins, right? Like he thought, okay, he's cleared down the five spin. He's down to the two spin, right? I thought he fell in. I was like, oh yeah, it was bro. close. You know, oh, it was uh, that safety jumped on top of him and it kind of like dropped him down. Finally, he would have had, then he would have had nine catches for exactly ninety nine yards and a touchdown. That would have been just like just tits. Ugh. Regardless, the a lot there'll be a lot of end zones in his future, um, and he garnered some really, really high praise. Uh, here's uh, from a. Kay Adams podcast, Devontae Adams and Gronk. Gronk. About this Brock Bowers. I keep seeing how amazing he is out there. He had another big week helping you out. Nine grabs, 98 yards. Yeah. I would love to hear from both of you, Devontae, and just like, you know, you just don't see that from rookies in this league. Well, I don't, I don't ever like to put any expectation on a young player, but I mean, the, the type of type of kid that he is, I mean, he literally only cares about football and he shows some promise of looking like this guy that's that's on the screen with us right now. Honestly, I don't I don't want to do that to him or, or or downplay what 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 he's done because he's he's one of the best to ever do it, and I and I totally mean that. But 
this young player is on a different level for, for a rookie. And I think Baltimore got a chance to feel that a little bit. You know, I agree with that, Devontae. I mean, Brock Bowers, I was a big fan of him when he was with Georgia. The guy's a winner. The guy's a playmaker. Whenever the ball's thrown to him, I love his explosiveness after the catch. And uh, I feel like he's on track, you know, to be better than myself. I mean, I don't think he can, you know, dominate in the trenches the way I dominated in the trenches. But just overall, as a pass-catching tight end, I think he can surpass me in the, in many situations. I mean, he already has 15 catches, the most by any rookie of all time in their first two games as a tight end. So shout out to Brock Bowers. I'm a big fan. I can't wait to, you know, continue watching him. That's two future Hall of Famers circle jerking on Brock Bowers. When you know what to look for, when you when when your when your job was to run routes, and this this interview actually piqued my interest. Okay, let me watch this all twenty two again, and let me just look at Brock Bowers. And I watched the first game, and I watched the second game. This dude is open every single play. Mm. Every single play, he's open. If you wanted to throw the ball to him all the time, you would have like a ninety percent completion percentage. He's always open. doesn't matter who he's against. And he's not bodying, like I said before, he's not bodying the smaller players. He's using his route running ability to get open against these guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Gardner's paying attention. He's gotten 25% of all the targets. All 25% of all the passes thrown by Gardner Minshew have been to Brock Bowers. He's on the same fucking team as Devontae Adams. Devontae's getting 27%. Like you're, you're getting, you're a rookie tight end getting just a smidge less passes than Devontae Adams. Tight end. For salary purposes. You're getting this, this many less passes thrown your way as a rookie in your first and second games ever as Devontae motherfucking Adams. I'm on board, man. I'm on board for it. And he has less drops. He had no drops. <laughs> he was targeted nine times, and he had nine catches. This dude, I don't know that people realize how special a player he is. And I think a lot of people are going to look back at this draft, and it's going to be Aaron Donald, and it's going to be J.J. Watt. It's going to be these types of players who are like, dude, how, why did he get drafted so late? Because this guy's going to be – he's – I said it before, and it's not an I told you so thing, but it's like it's something that was apparent to people who watch tape. This dude is a freaking monster. He's dragging people in the pros like he dragged them in the freaking college. He's working these these corners in the pros the way he was cooking these corners and cover people in college. They're going to have to start doubling somebody. And, okay, great. Who are you going to double? Because you can't double them both. Because if you do, either Please, not double them both. Anybody. Jacoby Myers is going to get 200 yards. Jacoby Myers, or you're going to be going to be able to run the ball a whole lot better because you have a bunch of small guys out there. Uh, you're not going to be able to rush a bunch of guys, so our guys going to have more time to throw. Um, it's like I said at the draft, man. You go to a, and this isn't me saying we should have. I, I was like predicting getting Brock. I was floored. I was fucking drafted, pumped, dude. Lord, we drafted a tight end. But what I was saying was you do what the market dictates. If there's a rush on tackles, we go corner. If there's a rush on corners, we go tackle. If and it turned out there was a rush on quarterbacks, we can get literally whatever the hell we want at this Best point. Best player right? available. Best player available, right? Imagine you realize that none of these rookie quarterbacks have thrown a touchdown yet. Not one rookie quarterback has thrown a touchdown this season. Imagine if all six of them don't pan out and it's just there was a rush on quarterbacks best class in, in history right and it's but it's brock bowers the, the the white tight end with the comb over that came that was the gem of the greatest quarterback class in nfl history i don't know if you caught it on, on uh it was today's um press conference the you know the head coach daily press conference for antonio pierce he said something really funny about brock bowers I know he was being complimentary, but it was it was I started laughing because it was hilarious. He said Brock Bowers is a football junkie. He doesn't care what he looks like. He doesn't care what he sounds like. <laughs> so, so, so with the lisp he has, 
He just wants to play football. And I'm like, oh, he talked about his hair and his lisp back to back. He doesn't care how little his dick is. He doesn't care. Oh, shoot. Bowers is freaking packing some meat, bro. I don't want him to shave his head. I want him to go. How long has it been since there was just like a full cul-de-sac bald NFL player and he just let it go on the sides? Like Terry Terry Bradshaw, Bradshaw, I think, was the last one. It had to have been like 60s since there was a straight up just bald guy. Bradshaw. Did not care. Just didn't give a shit. Just bald as a parking lot. Little cul de sac, let it come, let it roll down. That's a just strong statement, man. Work. That's yeah, not rock, rocking the Uncle Phil, smoking darts while you're on the sideline in between plays. Come on, I need, a throwback, player. Or what? <laughs> I need a throwback player. Hey, look, All man, right. he's yeah. he's it's crazy when you look back at the JJ Watt draft and you see all the players that were taken in front of JJ Watt and the mm-hmm. player that he turned out to be. And it's crazy when you take a look at the Aaron Donald draft and you see all the players that were taken in front of him, and it's like, dude, why did he wait? It's going to be the same thing. And they were both drafted around the same time, around the 13th pick. I think J.J. Watt was like 12 or 11, and I think Aaron Donald was like 9 or 10, something like that. They were right around the same time, and this dude is an absolute freaking beast. It's like, why did you, why did you uh, draft another tight end? Well, because he's not a tight end. All those the whole time that you saw him, he wasn't lined up in line of the tight end in the fourth quarter. They were moving him all around, and no matter who they had on him, he was he was getting open. Well, he should be open on Saturday, making his Allegiant Stadium debut. Sun, did I say Saturday, Sunday. Panthers at Raiders. Raiders five and a half point favorites. Panthers, I think, are pretty much unanimously considered the worst team in football right now nothing's going right they've scored i think a total of 13 points in two weeks so they opened up the raiders as seven point favorites and then on monday they announced that andy dalton is actually going to be the starting quarterback the line dipped to minus five and a half after that announcement normally when you say there's a quarterback change the line goes the other way but bryce young's playing so fucking bad yeah that's how bad he is that Andy fucking Dalton is coming in, and, they're, and, the, and the betters are like, oh, wow, these guys these guys are going to be a lot better now with the Ginger King throwing the rock. Like, that's that's how bad it's been. Although, Andy Dalton, 3-0 and as a starter against the Raiders. Got a little got a little history. And he had another uh, fourth win, too, where he came in late and um, got a win, yeah, too. Like, with the, I think of the Cowboys or something like that. Yeah. Um, oh. But, yeah, man, we got our home, uh, home opener. You'll be there. Soto. I will be there. I will be there. Shout, shout out, out to shout Rafi, out, my to freaking my, my benefactor. You're uh yeah, you're um don't what say kind of favors. It. What kind of favors do you owe him? Nothing. Get those tickets. Nothing. Friendship. We're gonna hang out, get grab, what a, you call grab it? a couple of drinks. We ain't doing no ditty shit. What are you guys grabbing? Grabbing what a couple of drinks. Is that what you call it? I'm couple getting bottled, I'm getting everything bottled and closed up. Nothing, no, I don't want I'm not gonna freaking drink anything fizzy. I don't, I'm just saying. It's not an alka seltzer. I know it's not an alka There's no such thing as a free lunch, Soto. No yeah, such don't, thing don't, don't try to Mr. Sandman me over here. Pill, I'm just pill, a pill Cosby. No one's that nice. Like I said, no we ain't doing no nice. ditty. Just because they got ditty, it doesn't mean you have to take his place. Uh, well, you have a great time. I think it's going to be fun, man. I, you know what it's I want to do? first time at Allegiant? Is your... No, I've been there before. I just haven't gone to a game. You haven't gone to a game yet? But I want to tailgate early. Uh, walk around and just interview. If you're going to be there, just hit me up. Let me know where you're going to be. And I'll come. I'll come say hi to you guys after the game as well. I'm going to uh, you know get some post game reaction stuff like that in the post game show. And I'll I'll dip in uh, every now and then uh, for that. Hit him up. Hit him up on social media, Mister Juan. Yeah, hit me up and uh, we'll, we'll connect, man. Okay. I'm about having a good time down there, man. I, I, I uh, don't worry, man. I'm a, I'm a I'm a good time. You know what I'm saying. I like that's, why, that's why you got invited because of the services of RJ. Uh, I that, the, don't put that out there. I don't want to have to, you know, disappoint people in the future who feel that I will give them some type of favor if they take if they invite me to a game because they're going to be sorely mistaken. They're going to be they're going to be disappointed in your services. There you know, will be no services you. other than a handshake and some pats on the back with a Raider victory. Well, the funny thing is. My penis is located on my back. Where did the game? Where is that from? My back is actually located on my cock. My <laughs> <laughs> I scratch your back, you scratch my back. <laughs> what movie is that from? 
Let us know in the comment section. Good one. <laughs> All right, Raiders, five and a half point favorites over the Panthers, like we said. Um, Panthers have been outscored 73 to 13 in two weeks. Um, Vegas and the odds makers seem to say that Andy Dalton's an improvement. Again, the line moved one and a half points on that. Um, Dalton started one game for the Panthers last season, lost to the Seahawks 37 27, but he had a good game. Three, 361 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Um, we know who Andy Dalton is. There's playing with 14th year or something like that and playing forever you know very very aware of who he is i think this is more of a i think the raiders kind of found themselves in the second half of last game and it's and this isn't underestimating we don't you know this we're the raiders this is the nfl there's there's no gimmies right this isn't underestimating the panthers but it is one of those matchups soto where i feel like it's far more important for us to focus on us than it is to giant adjustments for the opponent. I think we look at the tape from the second half of last game and you say, what were we doing right? Let's do more of that. Yeah, the, the issues with the with the Panthers run much deeper than Bryce Young. Yeah. They are lacking talent at a lot of levels and they are injured on the defensive line. I think that was going to be one of the strengths that, that they thought, which is why they were able to let Burns go. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, they have a lot of issues on their team. If we show up and we don't read the press, press clippings and we play physical, we are simply the more talented team. If we play smart uh, and we, we only had, like, what, five accepted penalties all season in two okay. games, so if we continue to play that way, where we're playing smart, we don't beat ourselves, we don't let them hang around, yes, Andy Dalton is much better situationally than Bryce Young. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's not going to get the high peak plays that Bryce Young is capable of doing because Bryce Young was a number one pick for a reason. Um, but when you don't have all those receivers that you had at Alabama, you, you have a lack of talent uh, on the outside with with the Panthers. Uh, it's it's going to be tough sledding. They don't they just don't have a lot of talent. The only way that they win is if we let them hang around. Um, I just don't see them being able to contain both Devontae and Bowers. Um, and I'll I'll tell you something right now. There's there's Jacoby Myers would be the number one receiver on the Panthers. Oh, for sure. Who is it now? Adam Thielen? Thielen and uh, some other kid Johnson. they got. But dude, Johnson look, Johnson? The, the, yeah, yeah. But it, it, he's, he's as a number two wide receiver, he's an, an excellent number two wide receiver. He doesn't get the looks because, you know, this team's going to revolve around Devontae and Bowers, and, they, and it should. Yep. Uh, but if they want to bear down and they, they, we're going to take away these two guys and this is what we're going to have to sell out and take away these two guys – I mean, uh, you know, Jacoby Myers is going to have 150 yards. Yeah, he's going. He's more than capable of of hurting you very, very, very badly. Uh, so as long as we go in there and play physical and uh, let them know who we are from the very beginning, uh, I think we can we can we can win this game and cover this uh, five and a half. I think this is the game. This is the again. I'm not trying to like act like this is a step over, but this is the dress rehearsal for us to finally decide the team we are and not the team we want to be. Antonio Pierce wanted to be a run first team, throw 22, 25 times a game, strong defense, get some turnovers, great kicking game, grind guys out, right? That ain't us. O-line can't do it. Not capable. Even if the O-line improves, that's not the team that we are. Zeus is still learning how to run in, as a, as a you know as a zone running back. We don't have the physicality to be a power running back. We're not going to make that change. That is not our team. We are not going to just as, offensively just wear down a defense and, and and be that team. We're just not. We're just not. Luckily, we have Devontae Adams. We have Brock Bowers. We got Jacoby Myers, and we got a Gardner Minshew that's second in yardage this season. Right? First in completion it, percentage. This is this is who we are. So let's throw the ball. We're not giving up on the run. We need Getsy to get creative. Find, like we gotta be able to, we have to be able to find ways to move that rock. But don't force it. 
get creative, but don't force it. I'm sick of these like second and 11, second and 12, second and nines every single play because we're forcing the run just because we tell ourselves we're a run team. No, we don't need, don't ask um, uh, Minshew to, to do crazy stuff. It's, hey, Brock, Devontae, do your thing, get open. We're going to get you guys 12 targets a game. We'll get Zeus. We'll get creative with the run game, but we're not going to force it, right? Defense, keep doing what you're doing. DBs, keep playing smart. D-line, keep running rough shot. Let's get some more takeaways, please. We've had one and two games. It's not enough. Let's get some more takeaways. And then the best kicking tandem in football. I mean, that's that should be who we are. And what better way to do it than in our home opener against the worst team in football to be like, all right, guys. Throw the playbook out. This is who we are now. Go show me. Okay. You remember uh, Mike Holmgren, right? How can I Coach? Forget? So the Andy Reid before Andy Reid. The Andy Reid before Andy Reid. The original Walrus. Yes. He His teams were passed to set up the run. Mm -hmm. He had the Favre teams. They were passed to set up the run. He went to Seattle. He had Sean Alexander, who was one of the leading rushers in the NFL, but he was a pass with Hasselbeck to set up the run. Mm -hmm. At Green Bay, where Getsy was prior, they were pass to set up the run. It's no different than that. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that Gardner Minshew is Aaron Rodgers or Brett Favre, but is he Matt Hasselbeck? He had a lot of good years. He had a lot of good years with Seattle. Uh, and that, that's, how, that's how they ran their offense. They passed. They passed when you thought they were going to run. They ran when you thought they were going to pass. And they just got big chunk plays left and right. And it's just you, you got to stop force feeding. You got to be able to just you, – you're going to get further. You know, there was a scenario where uh, someone was talking to me about a situation where they wanted to get out of a situation, but they didn't want to start over again. I'm like, look, let's just say you're running a mile. And right now, hampering yourself with the situation you are in now, you're only able to hop on one foot. Now, you got three laps done. You have to hop one more lap on one leg. What's going to be faster? You hopping that one lap on one leg or starting over and running four laps with two legs? You're going to be able to run four more than you, you know? So it's like you keep pushing this agenda. We're a run first team. We're a run. No, you're not. Your talent that you have on your team is pass first. That doesn't mean you can't run. That doesn't mean you can't be physical when you run. But you have to use your advantages that even when the team knows, the defense knows what you want to do, who cares? Mm -hmm. What did Al Davis say? We don't take what you give us. We take what we want. We're going to play our best football in the very beginning. We're going to take what we want, and then we're going to do what we want, whether we want to run or pass. That's what we're going to set up. And it's just that's the way we have to do it. With all that said, I would like to see Madison get some more looks. I think he's just a little bit better fit for our style of running, and he's and certainly a better pass catcher out of the backfield. Also, like also – we're not tipping our hand for personnel and formation wise mm -hmm. by having Madison run the ball more. Yeah. I still have big hopes for, for Zeus because I don't think that he is, he needs to break more tackles. Okay. Number one, but he's getting hit in the backfield a lot. That yeah. interior offensive line is not playing very well at all. The, the, the crux of the problem is the O line. So anytime I say Minchin needs to do this more, Zeus needs to do that more is all under the umbrella of the old line is doing nobody favors. But the problem is the old line is the hardest thing to change, right? Because it's, you know, do you switch five guys? Do you change the entire scheme? No, it's so much easier to switch out Madison for Zeus, even though the, the line's the problem. If one of these guys, you know what I mean? It's just like, that's just, no, yeah, the I line's the hardest thing to change, right? But so you can't just be like, oh, fix the line. It's like, well, with that said, um, a little bit of good news. According to AP, it sounds confident that Jackson Powers Johnson will be able to play on Sunday, make his debut against the Panthers. Um, again, it's not a a magic bullet. He's a rookie, 
coming off of a concussion with not that much time, but let's get him learning ASAP. There's no reason why this guy shouldn't be playing if he can't. Um, injury report in general, the uh, the Panthers hurting a little bit defensively. Three starting defenders, Robinson, Tuttle, and Clowney, all did not participate. Um, on the Raiders side, only two players did not participate, Divine Diablo to Cameron Richardson. The knee on Max Crosby, not even worried. He'll be fine. He never misses games. Colton Miller's shoulder, still nursing it. He's playing. I don't doubt that. Tyree Wilson, I kind of don't care, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Uh, and then Christian Wilkins, I don't think anything too serious. So already kind of limping a little bit, but we should be pretty much full strength ish. We should be more. We should be at more strength week three than we were week one. Yeah, I think we'll be all right. Um, defensively, kind of nice having Marvin Lewis there, right? He's the guy who drafted Andy Dalton. Like he's got. A, he's going to know him better than anybody, right? Yeah, kind of nice to have Marvin Lewis there. I mean, it's um, quite a few years ago, and it's a different system, but he'll no there are definitely things that, you know, bother a player. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, I mean, Thielen still kind of got it, but little, little old Deontay Johnson, That's those are your two best receiving options. Case, Deontay Johnson is a head yeah. case. Nothing too great there. <laughs> uh, I mean, really, the only – Andy Dalton isn't a schlub. He's not – just a complete Look, slapdick. He's, you Andy know. Dalton is going to put up numbers. He's going to put up points. He is a professional quarterback. He is an NFL, legit NFL quarterback who can move an offense. The issue that he's going to run into is he's not dynamic enough to make those plays consistently. And he's not dynamic enough to be able to make a lot of those plays if you make them uncomfortable. If you put him and Bryce Young together, then yeah, you'd have a great quarterback, more mm -hmm. mobile guy, guy and a guy that can you know is smart enough to take the plays that are there, but also has the arm to throw it deep if he needs to. Yeah, that's no problem. But unfortunately, that's where we are right now. With uh, well, unfortunately for him, that's where he is. If you give him a clean pocket and you give him time, he's going to hurt you. He's going to put up big points. Yeah, I, I predict a lot of uh, ginger on ginger crime with Max Crosby up the ass. Mm. Of Andy Dalton. No, no. Um, yeah, I mean, really, like, this is the only thing. I think the biggest thing to be concerned about defensively is, like, every team, can we, you know, their run offense is bad, but our run defense hasn't been all that stellar or fantastic. We've, we've worn down. If, if the defense has to play some long defend for some really long drives, the offense isn't helping them out, they're not getting turnovers, I can see potentially there being an issue. With Chubba Hubbard just kind of grinding a little bit. Um, I mean, that, look, I'm, they have Hubbard, they have Miles Sanders there. They got that la rookie Leggett who from South Carolina, who's this freaking speed demon. They have Mingo, mm -hmm. who's a guy that they got a couple of years ago, who kind of washed out, but he's a big target. They got some guys. The issue that you're having here is you didn't really know what you had because you had a guy who was not very good throwing them the ball. Mm -hmm. They're going to look better. They're going to look better than they have for the the first two weeks. So don't don't think we're gonna run and go in there and just smoke them. Their big thing is it's gonna be not X's and O's. It's what we see all the time when there's a big change on a team. They just get rejuvenated. It's Willie and Joe's baby, right? It's like when AP took over and we just crushed the Giants. It's like yeah, we just were invigorated, new quarterback, new coach. It's like that's that's all. I said the run game might wear us down a little bit. Honestly, the biggest thing is like, do, do they just get rejuvenated with Andy Dalton? Was everything going on? With their second year quarterback just so bad that everyone's just kind of given up. Like, this is our guy. This, this dude, is what we're stuck like, with. Like, fuck. Like, why am I even here? What am I doing? And then, like, you know, Andy Dalton's like a likable guy. Like, I, I watched his seven minute press conference today, all smiles, excited to do it. Like, again, like you say, he's a professional quarterback with a lot of experience. If they kind of if they come out rejuvenated, that's probably their best out, their their best route. To get Look, something going here, the one catch us by surprise because they're pumped on the new situation. They're not catching us by surprise because we know who Andy Dalton is, right? And we know that in the NFL, there the, the other teams are getting paid too, and all this crazy stuff can happen, right? 
we need to go out there and we need to make this. Do we need to blow them out by 50? No. But we need to make this a convincing win because we need to put to rest these nine and a half point spreads. And mm -hmm. oh, there go the Raiders. They, they they win, like you said, they win one week. It'll be so Raiders if they beat the, the Ravens on the road and then they lose to the Panthers. It, it we we need to there's a way, there's a culture internally and a culture externally. And right now, the culture externally in the media and with a lot of fans out there is we're still the same old shitty Raiders. Up and down and inconsistent and this and that. And to put that to rest, we have to smoke the teams that we're supposed to smoke. We have to beat the teams that we're supposed to beat. The biggest thing I want to see is us find ourselves. Right? I, I feel like we found ourselves in the second half of the Ravens game. Let's do that for four quarters. Let's go in with that as the game plan. Execute it and be us. That that's the biggest thing, right? Because if we do that, we'll win, right? Leave no doubt. Leave no doubt. There's no, there's nothing in the rules that you can't score on every single possession. You can't go out there and you can't dominate. You can't. That's not what Derek done this down. season. Yeah, right. The Saints have done it. possessions, right? It's like go out there and score, 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 Ooh. score, and just dominate. There's nothing against the rules. That means that you have to keep it close. Call it the Gwen Stefani method. Leave no doubt. Ah, ah, da, 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 da. Hold on, that's a soundboard. I would tell you to not quit your day job, but no, quit your day job and don't do that either and just find a hold uh, and, and just hide in it. That was bad. I think it's time to do what up Winbacks. I think it like is. That. Sam DeMann, always a fantastic, basically the third member of the Autumn Winback at this point. Thank you for being a member. Keep Lamar under 60 yards rushing, win the turnover battle. Carlson makes all his kicks, and we win. Close. Sam base. it was a tie on the turnover battle. We kept Lamar. I think Lamar got 42 yards rushing, 40 something. It was under 60. That was on the last run. Yeah. <laughs> throwing it away. Garbage time run, right? Yeah. Kept under 60. Carlson made all his kicks, and it was a tie on the turnover battle. Pretty close. You nailed it, Sam. I I love it when you guys get specific with predictions and it hits. Or or you're completely wrong. Either I, both are fun to me. Either you're way off or you're way right. Keep the predictions coming. We're we're watching them. We're following them. Believe you me. Don't worry. We're, we're watching. Iowa Raider fan. Accuracy is ball placement, not just completion percentage, which was still a problem. Talking about Gardner Minshew. I'm just glad the offense came to life and we won. Raiders! You want Iowa, man? When I read this, I was very irritated because it just sounds like complaining for the sake of complaining. I watched the tape. And his ball placement was pretty damn good. The it, he had one really bad throw, um, and it 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 almost seemed like he thought that uh, Harrison Bryant was going to run a little more of a comeback, mm -hmm. and he just threw the ball for like five years. It, it, the ball was so off target; it's it, it had to have been a mix up. Because he wasn't that off target at all the entire game, especially even early in the game he was on target, but especially in that la in the fourth quarter, he was ripping passes like 15, 20 yards down the field in the tight windows in between defenders, and he was throwing crisp outs to Bowers when he was cooking the the guy who was guarding him, and they were right on the money. Uh, he snuck that ball right by Humphreys for the touchdown. Snuck it right under his armpit. I mean, he was he was pinpoint with most of his passes. That one pass, it was really ugly. Other than that, he was good. There were there were three perfect passes to Devontae Adams. That sideline one that got all the love, right? When his toes where he was doing the Michael mm -hmm. Jackson, right? There was one was down the, the he pointed yeah. there. He pointed to the spot. That was perfect. And you know, you're like, all right, I only have one guy in this team that can actually catch this ball. So I'll, that's the throw I'm going to make. Another one down the siling with Devontae. That was just breadbasket 
perfect. Um, you know, it is, it is true. Like, he doesn't have a rocket. That's No one's saying that he does. That'll that'll hurt some things, right? He won't be able to find the same windows as Aaron Rodgers. He underthrew or that Josh fourth Allen, down right? ball. Like, he underthrew that fourth down ball. You know, you there'll know. be some there'll be some underthrows. I, I will say, I, I thought this I thought this statement would have been a lot more accurate after Week One because there were a couple where he like he hit a wide open receiver, but kind of underthrew it so he didn't catch him in stride. Like there was one when Devontae was running it over and he had to like stop and grab it, otherwise he, a shot at a touchdown. There's certainly like a shot at a touchdown. Um, so there's that, but when you're, he's literally the most accurate quarterback in football right now, and it's not perfect, but I'll take that over missing guys. Call me crazy, right? You're, you're, you're getting it to your guy. And, and how many drops did Devontae have? What was, yeah. what was Minshew? 30, 30 or 38, 30 of 38, th- at least two were drops. Probably two more. I think we can say we're pretty pretty droppy and that's not even counting like and when you have Devontae Adams and Brock Bowers you throw 50 50 balls they right? are 50, like 50 he's, them, dude. right that's what I'm saying it's like okay it's it's 50 50 so technically it's 75 25 one out of four you're not gonna make right but you throw that ball it is your job to say Mr. 25 million dollar wide receiver six-time pro bowler Jesus take the wheel right like I said Look. last week if, if you're Patrick Mahomes and you're throwing to an undrafted rookie, it's on you to be perfect. The quarterback, you you need to be doing all the work. When you're Gardner Minshew and you have Brock Bowers and Devontae Adams, you say, I'm I'm just putting you in a position to succeed. You take over. Yeah. You're the star. You're the money. Yeah. You guys do it. Here it is. And that's all we're asking Gardner to do. So you, there are certain keys that you're looking for, right? And a pre-snap read. And if that key opens properly... You just throw the ball up if it's mm-hmm. Devontae or Brock Bowers. You don't even look at the rest of the field because you're in the matchup that you want. Like if Devontae's out there on a one-on-one match matchup and you see like a, a three covering two underneath, right? You have trips or something like that, and Devontae's out wide, and you have like the you have the two corners and the safety on top, and then you have the two receivers. So that's three on two plus one, and then you have Devontae single coverage on the outside. If that safety doesn't float over to the edge, you're going to Devontae right away. If that safety comes down or he floats to the other side, you're going to Devontae. And it's it's not even a, a, a question. You have to throw that ball because that's your guy. There's not many guys in this league that you have to throw that ball to, and Devontae Adams is one of them. If he's single covered on the outside, you give him the ball. Super Pete, 1961. I love your podcast, guys. Okay. Hey, we love that. I'm sorry. I don't know when I became such a prude but I really wish you all could clean it up a little bit with the <laughs> sexual content. But I'm aware of the world we live in, so I don't really expect it to change, but I think your show will be just as good without it. Crassness is no substitute for real humor, and both of you have a good and intelligent sense of humor. Love you guys. Every, like, 9 to 12 months, we like to post one of these comments because we're dirty dogs. We're, we're pretty filthy, right? And I feel like Hell, I washed my hands day before yesterday. The um, I like to think we fill a niche that needs to be filled. There is a lot of football content out there to be seen. There's a lot of Raider content out there to be seen. There's a lot of really, really good. There's a lot Raider of really YouTube good creators. Raider content out there, guys. Really good Raider content. Like, I, you guys a- are spoiled, honestly, to be Raider fans. Because I've looked at other freaking content creators from other teams, and they are not good. Try being like a diehard Panthers fan and try to find a good show. Try being a diehard, uh, you know, like even like Texans fan or like there's there's not a lot there's of not like a lot of good ton content on there for those guys. Because there's a shit ton of Raiders fans, there's a shit ton of content, and when there's a lot of it, there's the, the cream of the crop, right? I like to think that we fill a nice niche. There's really great tape guys there's really great news guys there's really you know uh breaking news guys breaking news there's guys yeah analyst like there's a lot of good there's a lot of really good stuff out there i feel like we're the funnest show out there i feel like i oh, think, for sure i stand by everything we say i think you're going to learn stuff from us i think you guys are going to be smarter from it i think you're going to know x's and o's from it i think you're going to um learn like some life shit out of this but i think we're the fun one i think we're the fun show and there's a lot of fun shows, but if they're on ESPN, you can't really have fun because Mickey Mouse doesn't wear underwear. 
and scripts, you bro. They're script readers. You can't mention his penis. We can be crass. We can be a little awful, and I know that's going to turn off some viewers, but I think more of you will like it. And I don't think you're going to find a show anywhere like us. So I appreciate you, Super Pete. Like that was probably the most the nicest way for anyone to say, "Yeah, that was cool, man. Jesus. I appreciate that." Like you can't really say, "Hey, go to you know, go to church, you heathens." Nicer than that. So I, well, I we've gotten some it. of those. We've gotten plenty of those, and it hasn't worked. But, but look, this is I who mean, we are. Um, maybe maybe we're out of line. Let us know if we're if it's little if it's too much. You guys are turning away. You know, maybe we should look ourselves. There's certain in here a little topics bit. we're not going to cover. There's just certain things we're just not going to say. Okay, but RJ and I, we started this thing along with Rory with the understanding that we would just make it a continuation of our tech string about football, not the rest of the stuff. You don't want to see all that. And that's what it's been. We yell at each other. We argue. We agree. We, you know, share a bunch of stuff with each other that we see on social media. Uh, Call each other and- douche and losers and yeah but it's like, i want to stop i want to get, get, get out get next week i want to be stuff. clean i want to get out but every time i think i'm out rj pulls me back in giggity and that's my gift to soda Was that crass enough to it for you <laughs> that's my gift to soto keeping him in sodom and gomorrah uh, all right, we will be back on Sunday for the game. Afternoon window, uh, home opener. I bet a bunch of you guys are going to be there. Hunt down Soto, see if I find him. Um, if he's got a little glaze on his on his face, get some wet naps. Stop it, up. dude. No, there's going to be no glaze on my face. There's no ditty shit going down. I was just saying you're going to get donuts before the game. No, that's no, 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 you didn't. About. It's you're, That's you're going to really. be at like 4.30. Oh, no, you no, meant, oh, you thought I was talking. Oh, that's gross. Ew. You're, it's you're gross. so gross. Bro. That, is, never... that is the opposite of what Super Pete 1961 Super Pete, was saying. Super Pete is saying a prayer for us right now. And Super Lord Pete, knows, I apologize for that. That was not it. what I meant. Lord knows we can use the prayers. Until then, no going to if you're with me. <laughs> Hey, hey, you made it to the end of our video. Great job. I know you want more. Go ahead and click the next video. And if you're feeling crazy, go ahead and subscribe.